go electric here. Today is Sunday, September 29th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. As you might have guessed by these cacti behind me, I'm currently in Arizona on location to produce some exciting e-bike content for the Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel. I hope you'll subscribe over there for some exciting coverage very soon. On to the news. At the 2022 Consumer Electronics Show, I covered an emerging joint venture between Japanese electronics giant Sony and Japanese automaker Honda called Sony Honda Mobility. They showed a prototype EV slated for release under a new brand called Afila. This week's latest news is that the upcoming EV will support the North American charging standard. Honda announced their NAX partnership just over one year ago. This disparity shows us that Afila could be more than just a simple rebadging project. I thought it might be worth looking more closely into what could be motivating Sony and Honda to cooperate in such an expensive and high-risk endeavor together. You might know Sony for their consumer electronics products and professional production equipment. They have many successful entertainment sub-brands, which include video games, recorded music, and motion pictures. Their processor and semiconductor production and telecom divisions might be lesser known, but are equally important in the context of this partnership. In the 50-50 joint venture, Sony can leverage their existing framework of products and services for the in-vehicle infotainment experience, as well as communication, audio, and safety hardware, and software for their proposed Level 3 autonomous driving system. Sony entertainment brands can market Afila vehicles. For example, the Afila concept is a playable car in Sony Interactive Entertainment's racing game Gran Turismo 7 on their PlayStation console. Of course, Honda contributes their vehicle manufacturing expertise. Honda will scale up their EV program and drive costs down across their supply chain. The upcoming EV is scheduled for production in Ohio, which will avoid tariffs and could qualify for federal incentives. One very significant benefit of this joint venture is a legal path to direct sales. Legacy automakers like Honda are bound by contracts and laws to sell exclusively through franchise dealerships. The middleman business model adds significant costs which elevates minimum retail prices. The Afila brand intends to sell online, which could enable pricing that's competitive with other direct sales EV brands such as Tesla and Rivian. Pre-orders for the first Afila EV model are set to begin in the first half of 2025. Deliveries are expected by spring of 2026 in the U.S., with Japan to follow in the second half of 2026. Although the exterior design is pedestrian, do you believe the Afila brand has a chance to take off in the North American market? Kia has also offered an update on their fleet's upcoming NAX compatibility. They've said that their owners will be able to access over 16,500 Tesla superchargers starting on January 15th of 2025. The brand said they'll eventually enable charging sessions payments through the Kia Access 4 app. The functionality will require a vehicle software update. Kia intends to provide free NAX adapters to those who took delivery of an EV9 or EV6 after September 4th of 2024. Kia EV6, EV9, and Nero EV customers who took delivery prior will eventually be able to purchase an adapter from an authorized Kia franchise dealership. The company says three types of NAX adapters will be available, NAX to CCS1, CCS1 to NAX, and Level 1 J1772 to NAX. Pricing for these adapters have yet to be announced, but other brands offering NAX adapters are charging around $200 or so. Tesla grabbed several headlines this week. Firstly, their Shanghai factory exported their millionth EV. Giga Shanghai began delivering Model 3 in January of 2020 and Model Y in January of 2021 to local Chinese consumers. And by April 2021, they were exporting to other countries including Canada, Australia, Europe, and other parts of Asia. You may remember that back in July, Tesla hit a milestone of 6 million EVs delivered globally since their launch in 2012. Shanghai alone now has the capacity to build 950,000 units annually. That represents roughly half of Tesla's 2024 global production forecast across all four EV factories. 
Tesla has chosen to highlight the one millionth Chinese export figure at the moment when U.S. and EU trade policy proposals intend to block Chinese EVs and are making headlines. A proposed tariff in the EU would place a 9% price increase on Tesla's Shanghai models, but the U.S. and Canada have effectively prevented Shanghai vehicles from entering their markets with a 100% tariff. Additionally, the U.S. government has proposed new regulations prohibiting Chinese connected car software and hardware. If the restrictions were to go in place and China were to respond similarly, Tesla's business would be adversely affected. In other Tesla news this week, invitations for their October 10th We Robot RoboTaxi event began. While we didn't make the list, we look forward to covering the event from afar. Investors seem to be enthusiastic as well. On Friday, Tesla returned to the list of the top 10 most valuable publicly traded companies in the world based on market capitalization after falling out six months ago. What are your predictions for the October 10th event? What else do you think will be revealed? The Environmental Protection Agency announced the latest rounds of funding from the Clean School Bus Rebate Program with up to $965 million available to school districts. This fourth round of funding builds on the already $3 billion distributed across 1,300 school districts for about 8,700 school bus replacements, approximately 95% of which are battery electric. Applicants can request up to $325,000 per bus for up to 50 buses per application and can take advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act's $40,000 incentives for qualifying school buses. I'll include links to the program in the video's description in case you'd like to pass the opportunity along to your local school district. This week is the 14th annual National Drive Electric Week, which is a nationwide celebration to raise awareness of the many benefits of electrification across the transportation sector. The annual event is organized by several nonprofits, including Plug in America, the Electric Auto Association, EV Hybrid Noir, Drive Electric USA, and the Sierra Club and spans from September 27th to October 6th. They offer a network of in-person events, which tend to include test drives and opportunities to ask volunteers and EV owners questions about going electric. Online events can be found on their website if you can't attend one in person. If you're interested in attending or sharing with anyone else who has been EV curious, I'll post a link in the description below for access to find events nearby. Well, that's all for today's episode. Were there any other news stories that grabbed your interest? If you found value in The Current, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online. And please join me on other social media platforms like X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up-to-the-minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.